Hola, everybody. Today, we're going to be taking you on a tour of the best places to visit in Chile. Chile is one of our favorite countries to visit in the entire world. Located on the west coast of South America, this extremely long country is framed by the Andes Mountain on one side and the Pacific Ocean on the other. And it has such a diverse landscape that you can have so many different vacation experiences. And today we're going to show you some of those experiences by touring the best places to visit in Chile. Before we get started, why don't you just subscribe to our channel and click on that bell so that you get notifications because we're taking you around the world every week to another destination. You don't want to miss it. We're kicking off our tour of Chile in its capital, Santiago, which is really our favorite city in South America. We had an amazing time here. It's, you know, has those beautiful Andes mountains in the background, and it is very much a cosmopolitan city. This city is just full of life with so many different districts and neighborhoods. There's a lot of museums and artists, and there are plenty of amazing lookouts. Yeah, so we do suggest to give yourself at least two days in the city to really get, get into it and explore everything that there is to offer. A couple of highlights that we suggest you not miss when you're in Santiago is to go up to Sky Costanera. This is the highest observation deck in all of South America and it has incredible views of the city, especially at sunset. So why not go up and sit and have a cocktail as you watch the sun go down? That's what we did. My favorite place to visit in Santiago was definitely Metropolitan Park and then heading up to San Cristobal Hill. This is what I think is probably the number one attraction in Santiago and I can see why. You can take the gondola up like we did and take the funicular down the other side if you like or vice versa, but get up there because the 360 degree views of the city are just breathtaking. It has a, a large Virgin Mary statue with these beautiful gardens all around it. There's no shortage of things to do when you're up there. And if you take the funicular back down on the other side, you'll end up close to the Bella Vista neighborhood, which is the party place in all of Santiago. And this is a great place to visit. Now, obviously you can't miss the old town. And when you're there, you have to go down to the Plaza de Armas. It's the central part of the old town with this magnificent church that you have to go in as well. You know, there's a lot of religion and history in Santiago. And this is a really great place to go and take it all in. And our final view that we say is to go up to Santa Lucia Hill. This is not too far from the Plaza de Armas, and it is another place that has beautiful Greenland and parks and views of the city. And it has that nice fountain that you walk through as you head on up to get those views. So it really is another place to get one of those incredible views of this amazing city. Another one of the most popular places to visit in all of Chile is Vaparaiso. It's known as the city of art and it's incredible. Most tours will stop here for at least a day and in two days is actually highly recommended. Yeah, just walking around the streets and seeing all the street art from local artists as well as other artists who have come in and put their stamp on the city. Hitting the museums is a, is a super highlight here. And the views over the port are just to die for. This city is famous for its colorful houses built on the side of a hill, and it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site unto itself. The way that people get around the city is by taking funiculars up and down. These are historic funiculars, and you have to ride at least one. Because it's just fun. As we head south in the country, we head down into Patagonia, which is a place everybody wants to explore in Chile for sure. And we head into Torres del Paine National Park, which to me was a one place I really wanted to visit. It's been on my bucket list for a long time and it did not disappoint. This is such a beautiful landscape with rugged mountains and waterfalls and huge vast landscapes with wildlife just roaming free. Yeah, and you have to make sure you see the uh, three towers while you're there. Hopefully it's not too cloudy or, or rainy while you're there because the weather does come in and out very fast. We were very fortunate. We got some really good views of it. It's also a great place to see wildlife. We got to see wild pumas there. Can you believe that? That was a real highlight of, of that trip for sure. It was amazing to be able to see them because they are very elusive. But if you have a good guide, you'll be able to see them. Fingers crossed, hopefully. We also saw some vacunas, Ooh, yeah. which are like llamas, little tiny llamas. Well, not tiny 
tiny llamas, but they're like llamas in the llama family, and they're so cute seeing them prancing around in their herds. They really are, and if you do head down to Torres del Paine National Park, make sure you get out and do some hiking and walking around. Uh, the waterfalls will take your breath away, and just the, the these massive granite peaks make you realize just how small you really are, but it's definitely something you want to put on your bucket list. One of the top hikes to do in the whole park is the W Trek. So if you have the time, give yourself about five days to hike it and you won't be disappointed. And if you're looking for a place to stay, we stayed in Hotel da Pine, which is actually the closest to the border of the park itself, because you cannot stay inside the park. There are no hotels. So Hotel del Paine, it was really nice and cozy. We had amazing views from there as well. And we could get up early in the morning and get out there first thing before anybody else. Another one of our favorite places to visit in Chile is the Grey Glacier. This is one of the largest freshwater reserves in the entire world. And the glacier itself is 28 kilometers long and six kilometers wide. So it's massive. It has three different lobes coming off it. And we actually jumped on a catamaran and went out for a tour all the way out to see all three lobes. Remember how we said there were a lot of diverse landscapes in Chile? Well, we're going from the mountains of Patagonia all the way into the deserts of Atacama. Located on opposite ends of the country too. We're going from the far south to the far north. Now the jumping off point for the Atacama Desert is actually San Pedro de Atacama. So you either fly into there or the base that you'll leave from will be San Pedro de Atacama. This is a lively backpackers town where you can book a lot of tours right from town. There's a lot of cafes, restaurants, and places to have a, a cocktail or two at night. And you can really tell that this town's been around for a while, so they really cater to everybody there touring the Atacama. So it has all the um, things that you need. If you need to pick up any extra supplies or anything, you can do that here. And one of the first things you will do when you get there is most likely go to Val de la Luna. It is the Valley of the Moon, and it is so named because it really does look like a lunar landscape. In fact, NASA testing of the Mars rover right here in the Atacama Desert because of its similarity to the landscape of Mars. And it, it really does feel like you're walking on Mars. It does. And it's like it's so contrasting to the other landscapes in Chile, right? And you, it's uh, these red rocks combined with this yellow sand. And it's just just it, it does feel like you're on another planet. Now this is all located in the Los Flamencos National Reserve. And in here you will find sand dunes. You will see amazing miradors where you can watch the sunset. You can go for hikes to see the incredible desert landscape. And you are going to want to go and find the flamingos that frequent the salt lakes. Yeah, you know those famous pictures that you've seen with these uh, flocks of flamingos against uh, this desert background? Well, this is where you're going to find it. And we spent, oh, I don't even know, like an hour there just watching them fly or watching them gather together and feed and taking photos. It was, uh, it was something else. I'd never seen anything like that before in my life. One place that you must not miss when visiting Chile are the El Tatio Geysers. This geothermal area is the highest geothermal area in the entire world. And let me tell you, you feel it. You're at altitude when you're walking around and it's cold, but so incredibly amazing. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. We had been at Yellowstone and seen the geysers there, but uh, we went up there at sunrise because that's when they are the most active. So it's a bit of a drive to get up there and it was minus 13, so dress for the weather. But uh, I was super impressed with how many geysers there were in such a small area and how active they were. And walking around there took us about 90 minutes, but man, I was just like walking around with my jaw dropped open. I was really impressed with this amazing part of Chile. And the reason it's so impressive is it is the third largest geothermal area in the whole world. So not only is it the highest, it's massive. And you have pools and geysers and water bubbling and boiling and beautiful colors and layers from the mountains. It's really quite striking to see the mountains in the background as these geysers just shoot up into the air. Yeah, it's a very unique experience. Most likely you'll be traveling through Chile on an organized tour and a lot of these tours offer extensions to see Easter Island or also known as Rapa Nui. It's located 3,900 kilometers off the Chilean coast so it's a great extension to any trip and it's a, you're moving into like a whole different culture. This is more like a Polynesian culture over here and it's great to combine that with your trip to mainland Chile. 
Easter Island is famous for its giant moai heads. They actually range from two meters to 20 meters in height. That's like 60 feet. So nobody really knows where these statues came from. They think that it was the ancient Polynesians that put them there to commemorate their ancestors. There are 900 of them scattered throughout the island. So you can spend a couple of days visiting them. There's also some beaches. There's a famous beach that has not only gorgeous white sands and palm trees, but it also has the statues on it. And there's an incredible volcanic crater. This is truly off the beaten path. It's one of the most isolated islands on earth way out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And if you're looking for something to add to your bucket list, or should I say check off your bucket list, then Easter Island is definitely right up there. Our next stop is Chiloé Island, which is located just off the coast of Chile and is the second largest island in the country. And this place is known for its beautiful wooden churches, which have been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I think 16 of them have. They have these very unique wooden stilted houses. Yeah, these houses are so colorful and line the shoreline and they're all on stilts. So it's quite picturesque to see. And it is recommended that you do more than a day trip. It is just a ferry ride off the coast, but I suggest spending at least two days here. There are plenty of hiking trails and national parks and it's known for its abundance of wildlife. Yeah, it's a good place to get off the beaten path in this uh, really long country. One of the most magnificent places to visit in Chile is the Lake District. This is known as the Tuscany of Chile. <laughs> it is, and it has some pretty amazing landscapes. And one of my favorite places was uh, the Petroi Waterfall Hike. I thought that was really amazing. You're inside the National Park. There's all these boardwalks that go around these cascading waterfalls that are backdrop by these magnificent granite peaks. Feels like you're walking in a Lord of the Rings novel while you're there. Yeah, these waterfalls were massive. I didn't expect them to be so thundering. And it's fully wheelchair accessible, which I thought was amazing. So anybody can go and see these. Yeah, and you can get up really nice and close to them as well. So you really feel like you're part of the landscape as you're walking through the boardwalk. And while you're in the Lake District, we highly recommend taking a boat tour on Lago Todos. This is known as the Emerald Lake and it's a beautiful boat ride because you go out on the lake and you get to see all of the volcanoes that make the Lake District so famous. Yeah, and if you have a great day like we did, we had really great weather, you really get a peek at multiple volcanoes all around you. I don't think there's any place in the world that you can go and do this. Uh, and I think one of the reasons obviously why the Lake District is so popular. These volcanoes are absolute perfection. They're those cone volcanoes with the white snow caps on them. And it's just so picturesque on a clear day when you're down in the lakes and looking up at them, it's beautiful. Speaking of volcanoes, let's go up and take a look at the Orsono volcano, which again, is that one that is like a perfect cone. It looks like it was like drawn there or something. And you can go skiing on this volcano. We drove right up to the ski resort and then took a hike up the volcano. You know, it was hot down below and then we were hiking in the snow up above. It was so incredible to see. We highly recommend doing that. Yeah, the views that you get and you're walking along the snow, just crunching under your feet and looking up at this incredible volcano. It definitely takes your breath away like so many things in Chile. So while visiting the Osorno volcano, we stayed in Puerto Veras, which is a beautiful lake town with all kinds of cafes along the waterfront. And the lake itself, when you're sitting at the waterfront, has the perfect view of the Osorno volcano. So after you have hiked it or gone skiing on it, go down to town and just watch the sunset over the lake. It's spectacular. And those are the best places to visit in Chile. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell because we put up new travel videos every week and you don't want to miss one of them. See you next time. Ciao.